So, <laughs> with that introduction to put you in the mood, um, I spent three weeks in Spain, uh, in different parts of Spain. I've been in Spain before, but this was mostly in the north, and um, it was 2009, and I had lost those pictures for a long time, and I just recently recovered them, so I thought I'd show them to you. I was very anxious to see them again myself. But there are a lot of them. So um, I was going to start with uh, some cities in northern Spain. But I think a more uh, cheerful way to start is Barcelona. And then we'll go to northern Spain, which is still a very interesting part of Spain, but not as colorful as Barcelona. So um, stick with me and see. What, you know, I've been away for three, three weeks in Papua New Guinea. So I'm going to talk about Papua New Guinea in June, the fourth Saturday in June. But right now we're in Spain, and uh, these seem to be a little random. That's because I didn't have that much time to prepare for them, but here they are. So what name do you associate with Barcelona? Gaudi. Gaudi, OK. We're going to see a lot of Gaudi. His, uh, one of his houses that is open to the public. But before that, you saw the tourist bus. How many of you have been to Barcelona? Probably everybody. I recommend it highly. So there are three tourist buses, if I remember. And you can take them, uh, buy one ticket and take them at different times. And you see a lot of the city. This is. Um, but this is, I did walking. So this is the house that um, Gaudi designed that you can see now, sort of a museum. You can see how beautiful that work is. Mm -hmm. And that sets the tone for the whole city, the curves and the color. As it crosses the street, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the favorite uh, form of transportation in Barcelona. Um, La Familia Sagrada, the Holy Family. That's the name of the church that um, Gaudi designed and continues to be built all the time. Even though he's not here. Here it is. Absolutely magnificent church. There's always lines a mile long to get in it. This is still part of that house. So not all of Barcelona, of course, is uh, Gaudi. Some of it's very modern. <coughs> This is near the hotel I stay in. <laughs> Tapas is the food in Spain, which is little appetizers which are eaten um, because dinner is very served very late, like 11 o'clock at night. This is the view from my balcony in my hotel. The Rambla is the main street there, pedestrian street. That's the tourist bus, one of the three tourist buses. Discovered this little cafe there. <laughs> I don't know whether it was named after Barack Obama or what. <laughs> Some very fancy shops there. This is that same uh, house. Beautiful inlaid tile, uh, glass, really. It's a Caso Batillo. Here's some pictures of the interior. It's 
the roof. Does he remind you of a local architect at all? Jim Hubble? Yeah. Don't Jim Hubble? A local does. artist or architect? Architect. If you don't know him, you should know him. Do a documentary on him sometime. He's fabulous. But all curves and colors and that kind of thing. It reminds me of Mickey de Saint Falls. Yeah, days. a little bit, yeah. This is the elevator shaft. That's what you see on the roof. Amazing mind. He must have had to come up with something like this. What imagination. Yes. There were some stores on that street that had amazing clothes. I didn't buy any. I think I'd go back and buy some. <laughs> Did you bring back a dozen of those to sell here? Yes, good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, they're probably two hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> How much? I don't know. A lot. That's why I didn't buy any. Not like Melania's fifty-one thousand dollar jacket. Wow. Maybe. Here's another one. That's beautiful, isn't it? These are things. <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> That's David's store. Sculpture all over the place. There is a Picasso museum. I don't think that's Picasso. That's La Rambla again. A lot of activities go on there day and night. That the kids dressed up in costumes, costumes. Oh, a lot of food there. This huge market with all sorts of fantastic food. <laughs> Anybody hungry? Yeah, that's good. This is uh, obviously I wasn't there, but I took pictures of it. A festival that they have once a year on La Rambla. Apparently religious. More food. Yes. I'm not saying much about the country of Spain. I didn't do my research, but uh, one thing I say about the country is uh, it's fairly prosperous. The other thing is there's always a danger of parts of it seceding, and one of those parts is Barcelona, which is. Uh, Catalonia, and they're always threatening to secede. They speak a different Spanish, they speak Catalonian, which is very difficult to understand. But so far they haven't. The other part, of course, is the Basque country, which always threatens to secede. Special on top of two dollars and fifty cents each, or two whatever pesos. So that's it for Barcelona, and if it's okay with you, I'll switch to uh, northern Spain.
Oh, there's no bullfighting in there. So this uh, section has Salamanca, Santiago de Compostela, and Bilbao. Any of you been to any of those places? Bilbao? Yeah. All three? Did you go to Santiago on your knees? I didn't go on my knees. <laughs> Did you go on your knees? No. Santiago is a place where pilgrims go after long walks sometimes on their knees. So Spain is a country on Europe's Iberian Peninsula, including 17 autonomous regions with very diverse geography and cultures. Uh, the Madrid is home to the Royal Palace in the Prado, and I don't have slides in Madrid mm -hmm. this time. Uh, Segovia has a medieval castle. I did go there, and an intact Roman aqueduct. Barcelona is defined by Antoni Gaudi's whimsical modernist landmarks like the Sagrada Familia Church. 47 million people in Spain, and they're still on the Euro. Salamanca is interesting because it's a university city, one of the oldest universities in Europe. It's in the northwestern part of Spain, part of the Castile and Leon region, history dating back to the Celtic era. Um, it's known for its ornate sandstone architecture and for the University of Salamanca. Out in the 1100s, <laughs> that's Europe for you. And a key intellectual center in the 15th and 16th centuries, the university continues to add to the city's vibrancy with its international student population. And it does make a difference. Um, I think it's the only university town I visited. Hmm. I just said that, I think. Okay. I sat in one of the classrooms and I was very distressed to find that the students carved on the desks there. <laughs> I hope they did it artistically. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. If you see these students, you'll see. And they were old carving. <laughs> so, um, the University of Salamanca. I said that already. Here's a <laughs> I don't know whether it was a particular festival I happened to run into, but uh, these guys were walking down the street dressed like this. Why they were holding cabbages, I don't know. So whatever. <laughs> it was very festive and uh, lots of music. <laughs> mm. Like they were having a good time. This is apparently medical students. <laughs> This is the uh, ornate sandstone architecture. You can see where Gaudi got his inspiration because the, this kind of architecture was there for thousands of years before he even came along. Of course, there are a lot of churches and cathedrals there and also at Salamanca has its share. This is the university. 1988. The streets are always crowded, day and night. 
there were lots of good tapas bars. Mm -hmm. Several of the, uh, the cities in northern Spain had these little trains that went around. There's a crisis and recession by ham, sausage, fish, <laughs> pig. <laughs> Square Plaza Mayor. So people make themselves comfortable day and night, eating, playing music, dancing. Yeah. Restaurant Dulcinea. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Here's the train that I mentioned. Chinese letters, but they make churrias and churrias. <laughs> there they are. Mm. Oh, my friend and I discovered there was a concert going on, so even though we're not concert goers at this time, we went across town. Remembering that my friend was Nancy Appleton. <laughs> I think I was with her at the time. No, that's not right. No. Nancy and I were in Barcelona, but we weren't here. So, this beautiful mansion, the door was open, and so we went in. Apparently, it was an old casino. this art exhibit by this man. It's him. So he painted scenes around Salamanca. That's the Plaza Mayor again. sculptures in the home, in this casino, I think it was. <laughs> but there was a lot of fun to be had there, too. It's not only an architectural wonder, but it's uh, a place where there's restaurants and 
shops and uh, people always having fun there. I don't know whether he was a sculptor or a real person. <laughs> okay, so that's Salamanca. Any questions? I don't know that much about it, but it's a lovely, fun town. And from there to um, Galicia, I think another potential secession in Galicia. This is where the pilgrims go, this Santiago de Compostela. Yeah. Um, and that's what Hilda was talking about when people come on their knees, the very religious pilgrims. It's the capital, Galicia. And millions of people come to the city every year, many of them reaching uh, the end of the way of St. James pilgrimage route. It's, uh, well, as Salamanca, both of them are World Heritage Sites, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This is a um, hotel, my hotel. Does anybody know about these bagpipe looking things? I think they're made out of pig skins or something. Hmm. But it's popular in that region. That. A lot of small streets, <coughs> beautiful architecture. I think this is where I started. Lots of food. <laughs> These tapas bars get very crowded between uh, like 5 and 8 o'clock at night. You buy a drink and then you get sort of free tapas. I came across this music school. Oh, sorry, I have more slides of that somewhere else. A lot of rain up there. This is a real pilgrim, I think. Mm -hmm. Although they're not all dressed like that. But the pole is very distinctive. If you see that, you know that that person's been a pilgrim. These are people just dressed in the street, I think. My pictures have an exceptional definition. I don't know what you say. The Catholics have a very fancy hotel up there, right by the cathedral. So these kids are doing dances, actually. They're not just lying in the street. They're doing performance art, uh, acrobatics, dancing, modern dance. Like spider legs. It's a beautiful building, unlike the rest of the city, which, of course, is very traditional. surprising to see a building like this there. Back to the traditional. That's a that's a regular This is the church where the pilgrims wind up. There's 
a bunch. <coughs> Designating a human heritage. Another train in that little city. Okay, so I was taking a Eurail uh, all around to these cities. It was very convenient and comfortable and efficient. And so from there, I went to Bilbao. What's Bilbao known for? Well, the art museum. To me, one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. Who is the architect? Um, <laughs> architect. I know, like I know my own name, but I'll think of it in a minute. Anyway, I have something here. I That's just the train station. It's a building across the street from my state. Train station. A river once. Frank Gehry is the name. <laughs> so that's the Guggenheim Bilbao. I think it's magnificent. I took a lot of pictures of it because every every place you see it, it looks different. Mm -hmm. It's an art museum. There's Frank Gehry. And what um, building did he design? In uh, LA? Disney. 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 Yeah. Same style. Of course, he's from LA. He says, I see the process as an evolution. In the first sketch, I put a bunch of principles down. Then I become self critical of those images and those principles, and they evoke the next set of responses. And as each piece unfolds, I make the models bigger and bigger, bringing into focus more elements and more pieces of the puzzle. And once I have the beginning, a toehold into where I'm going, and I want to examine the parts in more detail. And those evolve, and at some point I stop, because that's it. <laughs> I've heard him give several lectures. He does have an amazing mind, and he's totally unorthodox in the way he designs things. He grew up in Canada in a Jewish family, and he said he used to uh, go into the bathroom and see the uh, carp in the bathtub because his mother would make good filter fish on Friday night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the carp gave him this inspiration for all these uh, buildings that are, look like they're in motion. This is the path leading to the museum. The exterior is the same as Disney, I think. It is the same as Disney, uh, Disney Hall. Yeah. This preceded Disney Hall. There was a huge, Richard Serra makes these huge wooden sculptures. So there was um, a show of this there. I walked through this, I would be about one inch in this picture. This is 
but it must have been quite a job to set this up. I see. Let me go. It is from the top. Besides Richard Serra, they had a show on Frank Lloyd Wright, which seems appropriate. That's a bridge that we'll talk about in a minute. I think we will. Oh. Anyway, Calatrava is a Spanish uh, architect, uh, does amazing things. So right, well, not next to it, but looking out the windows of the Guggenheim, you can see this wonderful Calatrava bridge. In Valencia, he built a marvelous science museum. Mm -hmm. Calatrava, that is. This is the show on right. Not much to show you. And another view of the museum. Outside the museum is this huge spider, arachnoid, or whatever. It is. No, um, who did that? Some of the art in the museum. These are some uh, entrances to the subways in um, Bilbao. So this is Basque country, the other region that has been talking about secession from Spain for a long time. The food is different, the language is different. It's uh, interesting compared with, say, Barcelona or Madrid or anything else in Spain. It's coming. Uh, that's wrong, I spelled the name wrong, it's Calatrava. This is outside the museum for some reason. I have too many pictures of this, but I just found the, the whole structure of it just fascinating inside and out. especially overlooking the traditional Spanish buildings, but it fit in very well. Floyd Wright exhibit? Yes, yes. Temporary. Yeah, they just have different shows. Like the Richard Serra show was temporary. And I don't remember what building this was on top of. It doesn't seem to fit in with anything that I saw. And I don't remember what time of the year it was, but it looked like Japanese maples across the way there. <laughs> okay, so the next uh, two s next two are um, from a different part of Spain.
apparently this is more of Bill Bow, sorry. <laughs> It's confusing to you. This is more of Bilbao and um, San Sebastian. So you can see Bilbao is more inland. seeing it again. I love to see it myself. It's a door like that in our apartment. Huh? There's a door like that in our apartment house. Somebody's got the same door. Same building. Yeah, we had not left Bill Bauer. I thought we had it, but we had not So there's about Frank Gehry. Born in Canadian, resides in Los Angeles. He's done a lot of work in the Los Angeles area. Um, Number of his oh his own private residence is in um, near Los Angeles. He's now 88 and uh, Canadian. And to put Disney Hall in there. That's Disney Hall. So here's more Bill Bell. So the Guggenheim, when it opened in 1997, accelerated the tourist trade, which already had been coming to uh, Bilbao. Now over 600,000 tourists a year. See how the light is reflected off the building. That's right. So different times of the day, cloudy, sunny, it always looks different. That's the problem they had in Los Angeles with this building. They had to do something to the exterior to reduce the reflection. The oh, really? For the apartments. Yeah. See, Disney Hall is sort of crowded in there in Los Angeles, so you don't really see the whole thing very well. But here it has its own space. another building downtown. I don't know why it would be the headquarters of Habitat, but maybe. So Bilbao is the 10th largest city in Spain, 346,000. Uh, the metropolitan area has over a million. And uh, Bilbao is the main urban area in what is defined as the greater Basque region. There's the Tal Bridge. That's a different museum, of course. <coughs> it's a very lively city. It looks like very prosperous uh, stores and restaurants, housing. But Bill Howe is a vigorous service city that's experiencing an ongoing social, economic, and aesthetic re revitalization process started by the iconic Bilbao Guggenheim Museum and continued by infrastructure investments, but also this um, very impressive skyscraper. I'm not sure what this Japanese Tori is doing. It's fun the way the Art Deco and the Gothic and the uh, all these architectural styles blend very well with one another. Spain's still a very Catholic country, although I'm not sure how many observant people there are.
good view of the bridge. <laughs> okay, switching now to San Sebastian, which is quite a different city on the coast, also in the Basque country. I thought it was a beautiful city, very elegant. Uh, and I'm not sure these pictures do it justice, but let me try. So it's a coastal city and municipality located in the Basque Autonomous Community. It lies on the coast of the Bay of Biscay, 12 miles from the French border. Locals call themselves Donas de Arabra, singular, both in Spanish and in Basque. The main economic activities are commerce and tourism, it's one of the most famous tourist destinations in Spain. It's got a beautiful beach, Miles Beach. There's some. That's another color travel bridge. There he is. Um, he's only 65. He lives in Valencia. A lot of his work is in Valencia, but also all over Europe. Um, structural engineer, sculptor, and painter, particularly known for his bridges supported by single leaning pylons in his railway station, stadiums, etc. He's also a genius, I think. It's beautiful. Isn't that amazing? For the landscape. Oh, these are still Bill Bell. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I apologize. You're very mixed up. They're so beautiful. Those are beautiful. beautiful. <coughs> yes. See, this is not Spanish. This is a different language. Mm -hmm. Sounds about. She's that look delicious. Mm -hmm. 